Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. So in this video, I will just show you what APG or RPG is. So as you can see, it's been around since 2004 uh, from United States. So uh, let's just quickly see what the purpose of using RPG. Okay, so let's just quickly show you right here. So what is this used for? Uh, RPG is a tool that we can just use it to manage the API gateway and make it easier to produce and deploy the modern, develop uh, per friendly apps, uh, developers creating the connected app, uh, updating the uh, legacy uh, applications and other facilitating data transfer between applications and services uh, can also use the uh, RPG. Okay, so uh, right here, I just want to quickly uh, going to open this in a new tab as well as this one right here all right so let's just uh, take a look at this one here the url you can see cloud.google.com slash apg and um, let me just scroll down and just have a quick look at this one right here so this is what it look like uh, basically the rpg stay in the middle it just like act as a middleman and right here this is the it can be the uh, apps partner apps uh, consumer apps employee apps and uh, right here these are all of the back end um, system or we try to connect to the uh, back end uh, servers it can be like um, the cloud apps, uh, systems, record, or Internet of Things. And for the uh, APG or RPG, uh, we can also have uh, some of this function here, like uh, uh, considering the security, uh, analytics, operation runtime. Uh, there's a lot more here. And uh, there is also the monitoring here as well. So hundreds of company. Uh, use the APG. Now let me just uh, scroll down see what else. Okay so um, that's it for this page and see this one. So again what is uh, APG or RPG? It is a platform though for developing and managing the API and by the front service with the process layer it just uh, try to uh, provide the abstractions uh, for the back-end service APIs and also the provide the security like I said earlier as well. Uh, the following here is show the high-level architecture of the RPG. Okay, so here we have say this is the back-end services, uh, whatever that uh, our back-end is, and this is the app uh, the a client app basically like uh, app on the can be on the phone or com uh, on the laptop or computer then say if um there's a, a make uh, like post request or get request from the uh, client to the back end it will just go through like the apg and here these are the step like uh, we have the apg runtime um there's like the uh, this is google uh, cloud platform services uh, that it can just identify something here the uh, projects and uh, there's like this is for the dev and admin and it also go through the RPG services hosted by Google and this is uh, the high level architecture uh, if you want to read more just it read it right here because I just want to give you like a quick overview of what this does and this is another one flavor of the RPG uh, hosted uh, can be like uh, a SaaS versions or the other one which is the hybrid versions uh, we will look into that in detail and this is the basically just an example of making the servers available on the internet or on the web so we have say like uh, the client apps it just make a connection to the backend servers and try to point back and forth uh, and here this is just an example and how about say we make the servers available this time it through uh, RPG okay so this is what it looked like we have the client apps mobile point out cell partner and also web and again like I mentioned here the RPG just stay in the middle and right here this is the back end services 
So whatever that the data coming from the back end say to the front end, that it will just go through the RPG first. Uh, let's just take a look at what else we can see. This is the proxy. Uh, this is the component of the RPG, which again I show you. Services, uh, Google Cloud, and this is the runtime. Uh, this is just analytic. Okay, so I hope you get uh, some idea of what this is going to look like or what the purpose of using the RPG. So now let's just uh, go back here and we can just basically try to create one. So it can, we can either click on the try it free. Now we going to give a name. So I want to, so with the RPG 8 uh, free trial limitation, uh, this is for one user only in the non-production environment. Uh, a thousand, um, 100,000 API call per month, it's, it's free and 30 days of the report, community support only, no runtime, uh, SLA, no conversion to paid uh, offering and it end after 60 days. So that should be fine for now. And I'm going to, let's just try to put, uh, this case I put my email. So going to be Hongli tutorial at gmail.com uh, password. Let me just uh, type this one first. All right, password enter. Company name Hongli Tech. Uh, just one. And country Australia. Uh, click on the agree to term of service sign up not at the moment click on the create account let me also close this as well all right it just sent an email and then i just need to confirm it i just click on the link in the email just to activate uh, my account. So now let me just try to go to the login.rpg.com. So here, this is the email and the password. Uh, click on the sign in button. All right, it's very simple and quick as well. So now we have all of this, and it just tried to say that it's expiring 60 days. Um, now, uh, this is the interface of it. We have like the developed, we have published, analyzed, admin area here. But uh, right now, what I'm going to quickly show you is to try to run the uh, Swagger spec. So here, uh, also I before getting into the Swagger spec, I just want to also uh, show you what about, uh, say I try to enter uh, search for RPG and see uh, the job available for this uh, kind of technology here as well. And as you can see, it's actually not too bad. Uh, we have like 50 jobs found and uh, this all related to the microservices developer. Uh, there's more here integration developer. Uh, you can see that uh, this is the, if you get into uh, understanding like uh, all of the RPG, then these are all the role that you're going to get into. Okay, so now um, let's get back to the Swagger. Uh, the Swagger editor here, uh, just search for that. And now um, let me just click on the first link, editor.swagger.io. Uh, we can see that we now have the, uh, basically this is like a sample with the Swagger pet store. Um, also want to uh, mention that this Swagger is uh, version 2.0. We have another Swagger, which is this uh, version 3, and it's called Open API. Just uh, keep that in mind. So Open API, this is uh, for the uh, version either for version 2 or 3, but for Swagger, this is just uh, uh, version 2. And um, now we have all of this written 
uh, in using the uh, YAML uh, uh, format. Uh, it also supports the JSON format here as well. And on the right hand side, if you want to make call, you can just quickly click on uh, one of the button and try to fill out uh, some required information. Um, the purpose of using this basically you can just try it out right away without having to uh, say use the uh, postman or try to create your complete application so that you can just make call to the API. Uh, this is just a quick uh, for testing. And um, now what I want to do just go back to the RPG again and going to click on the first one right here which is spec. What I'm going to do, I just want to uh, basically copy everything and put it inside here and try to run this swagger as well. So now there's a button on top here. We can import from the URL if you have one or try to import the either um, JSON file or the uh, YAML file from using this button. But I want to create this from scratch. So I click on the new spec and it does come up with this uh, uh, sample which is example title and here you can see that open API is uh, version start from version 3 and um, I will try to copy the swagger uh, 2.0 to this and see if it support or not but uh, like here you can see that if I click on this uh, try it out and execute uh, we get the response which is here but uh, now I want to get it of this and try to show you the version uh, 2 so I'm going to copy everything and delete all of this and try to paste the Swagger Pet Store so now we have that in here um, I want to see if uh, this one actually working so I click uh, this one right here because this is the get request. Uh, try it out and we have this, uh, we can click one. So available, execute. And here we can see that this is the request URL uh, with this um, response, which is a 200 success response. And this is basically the um, response body that we get from making a request to this URL. Okay, so now uh, it seems to work fine for this one. What I'm going to do now, just uh, try to save this and give it a name. Uh, I'm going to give this as the um, probably just pet store. Save it. And the file has now been created. I can just click here. And here you can see that we have this uh, file saved to uh, our, uh, in this case, my account, which is Hong Lee Tutorial. So if you want to make change to this file, you can do that as well. Just click on here to either rename, move. Uh, we can create proxy by just clicking here, or you can just click on this area just to edit it. Now the next step um, I want to quickly show you is the uh, API, the proxy. Uh, you might not get an idea what I'm doing right now but again bear with me. Uh, now what you need to do just click on the uh, environment, uh, click on the test environment and uh, because uh, we, we can either select the prod or test but now let's just go with the test and try to create the uh, proxy and this does come with the existing uh, when you try to sign up into uh, this new account. So now I'm creating the API proxy and we have uh, a few more options here. So we're going to use the reverse proxy. Uh, it just throws the inbound traffic into a backend service. Uh, there's a link here. You can see that we can just click on use open API spec. And here because we have just uh, created one, let's just uh, select on this one pet store and click on the select button. Alright, 
So here we have the uh, proxy name which is Swagger Pet Store. Uh, this is the best part which is um, Swagger Pet Store. Uh, this is the description and this is the target endpoint. Uh, you can just rename this to a uh, lower case as well, but uh, I'm going to keep it as is. Click on the next button. We have a few more options here for the uh, common policy uh, with OAuth or API key, and this can just pass through right away without any authorization. Just keep that one. Click on the next button. We have this uh, list of operations, uh, like I just show you in the Swagger as well with the post request, get request, delete and more now let's just click on the next button here the virtual host um, we have two options uh, which um, this is the default one uh, it just come with the HTTP while this is the HTTPS the, the uh, secure one uh, this does come with the uh, two environment prod or test let's just keep this one uh, with the secure option select um, next one, this is a summary. Just want to see the summary of the proxy name, which is this name. Uh, this is the best path and target endpoint policy. Uh, this is the spec and secure. Uh, right here, we can just select the uh, proxy will begin handling uh, after it deploy to one of the environment. In this case, this is the uh, test environment. Now we can just click and deploy. It try to create a proxy for the Swagger Pet Store and deploy the proxy into the uh, test environment. And this is the URL. Uh, I can just click on this, but uh, yep, uh, we can also get the URL here after clicking on this one as well. But let's just now click on the edit proxy. Okay, so here it is. Uh, like I said, this is the URL. Um, you can see that we have the deployment here, deploy to the test environment, and the proxy endpoint, which is like a, a dust pet store, uh, default target here, and uh, this is the target endpoint, which is we made the request to. Um, now, let's just try to see, there are a few options more uh, here, the developed, we can just write the uh, some of the code in this uh, XML format. Uh, we have the proxy endpoint uh, down here. We have the target endpoint. So for this uh, proxy endpoint, we have preflow. Uh, we have um, let me just zoom in a little bit. So here uh, we have preflow. Uh, we have flow. And this is all of the conditional flow. But we won't get in detail in this video again. Let's just uh, quickly show you uh, what the interface look like. And this is the uh, property. And we have trace here as well. So trace, uh, I will make a, con uh, a call. Like uh, in this case, this is the um, get request. And then we try to see what uh, the process look like. And we have another one, which is the performance tab. So right here, there's nothing to show. For the trace, let now just um, try to uh, create a new trace session. So this is like uh, monitoring what the process is like when we try to click on a button, then it try to record uh, that uh, session for us. So now when I click on here, and I click on this send button and see what uh, the result that we get. So here you can see that uh, we get the result of 404, which is not found. So we will need to go back and try to see why is that happening. Okay, so here we have, uh, we will see that this is the endpoint, which is last swagger dust uh, pet store. Now I want to go back and see um the let's just go back here this fact click on this pet store again um here we have the get uh, requests 
and see what else this is another one which is store slash store slash inventory let's just try it out execute and we get the response from here so let's just take this as an example i'm going to copy this and uh and point let's just copy this so now let's just go back to the api proxy uh click on this okay so developed I just want to show you another one here we can also see all of the list here as well we don't need to go to that uh, spec to get to each of the uh, requests like seen here um, now let me just go again to the trace this time I'm going to add this to it which is the store slash inventory and start a trace session and now let me just try to click on the send button again and now you can see that we see a status of 200 so now let's just quickly look into this one uh, we have this one here this is the request from the client while this one here this is the response received from the target server um, we have a lot more here this is like the uh, request follow started uh, we have all of this uh, conditional flow uh, and up until here this is the uh, target uh, request started and it tried to uh, request here send to the target server and now we start to uh, get a response received from the target server and this is what it does with all of this uh, conditional flow and now finally it sends to the client and the proxy post um, flow started and this is the analytic data it start to record this is for the analytic uh, purpose uh, inside this RPG itself and down here there's a lot more information but uh, we will get into this in the uh, future video uh, also, I want to point out this one, just this like this one, so that we can just see all of this uh, easily, like all of the uh, request header, uh, body content, the property that use, and yep, that's pretty much it, guys, for this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, just again let me know if you're not sure about something. And until then, see you guys in the next video.